Rasheen Sudman was close to her father. As a girl, she thought she couldn't live without him. I always thinking and telling to myself, if one day I lost my father, I can't live anymore. But when she was 13, Rasheen's father was martyred for his faith in Jesus, executed by the Iranian government. And she discovered the strength of her heavenly father in a whole new way. When I heard that news, I clearly remember that a caring hand was actually <laughs> um, surrounding me. And uh, after three days, I wrote a letter to God and promised him to um, follow my father's footsteps and serve him as my father did. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on the Voice of the Martyrs radio network. You know, Rasheen Sudman could easily be a vengeful, bitter person right now. Her father, Hossein Sudman, was a pastor in Iran. When Rasheen was 13 years old, her father was arrested for his faith in Jesus. In the weeks that followed, her and her family were able to go and see him, but then they heard tragic news. Rasheen's father had been executed, giving up his life for the sake of the gospel. But instead of becoming bitter after losing her father, Rasheen is spreading the same gospel that he lived and died for. If you missed the start of our conversation last week, I hope you'll go online to vomradio.net and listen to that conversation. Let's go ahead and hear some parts of the story that we heard from Rasheen last week, and then we'll listen to part two of our conversation. Did you understand, even as a, as a girl, that what he was doing was dangerous in Iran? Did you know that, well, my dad's a pastor, this, this could be dangerous for our family? Actually, I didn't sense the fear. Or, <laughs> I don't know if there was something. But I think everything happened from when I turned to 11. And then because one day I was playing in our yard and with other friends and I remember a car came and parked in front of our house and we didn't know who they are. We, we were thinking maybe they are some of those people came to <laughs> in order for him to minister to them. But uh, after a few ten minutes, I remember they invited my father to sit in their car and that was the first time he was arrested so he was arrested for a month and then after that after one month they released him they warned him and they gave him two weeks time to think to think about his life and they told him whether you are going to stop your ministry and deny your faith or we will kill you and that's the serious warning and um, because they couldn't stop my father. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember when he came home after being arrested that month? Do you remember what happened when he came through the door or what you thought when you thought, oh, dad's home? Yes, we were waiting for him because we heard that they are going to release him. It was around two o'clock and um, we were we were actually preparing house for him and cleaning and yeah when he came to the house we were all crying and yeah <laughs> we ran towards him so I remember the first person I ran to my father was my oldest brother he was cleaning the yard and then so because my father was very clean um, man and he wanted to everything be tidy and so we were preparing house for him uh, so I rem- yeah I clearly remember um, the moment he came to the house and we were really happy and we were thinking uh, telling to myself I hope this is the last time that we are not having him for for this such a long time unfortunately it wasn't the last time no, unfortunately. um 
one of the things as I've been reading and preparing to come and talk to you, the, the church leaders above your father in the Assembly of God Church said, maybe it's time for you guys to leave Iran. It, you've been arrested, you're having trouble, there's more persecution coming. Maybe you guys should go outside of Iran. Your dad said, no, I'm not going to leave. Tell us a little bit about that. And he, he made some really powerful statements about why he was staying. As I mentioned, after his, the first time he was arrested, everything was changed. And uh, we didn't have that freedom uh, anymore. And then uh, he went to other brothers uh, in Tehran and shared all the information, all, all his experiences with the uh, brother Huck and other brothers. And, and I want to, just for our listeners, give them some context. Brother Hike was the leader of the Assembly of God Church in Iran, and he also later would be martyred for his faith. Um, so your dad went to Tehran and sat down with Brother Hike and said, here's what's happened, yeah. then what happened? Brother Hike, uh, they realized that this is serious ultimatum. So that they offered him a help and they uh, told him, we can help you to escape the country with your family. But uh, that's my father's response. Do you want me to read yeah, it? Please. Yeah, please. <laughs> and my father replied, actually, I am a follower of the great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I am ready to sacrifice my soul for my sheep. For me to escape from this persecution would cause the hearts of my flock to become cold and weak. I never want to be a bad example for them. So I am ready to go to prison again and if necessary to give my life. Yeah, he said that and he left Tehran and he went to Mashhad. And while my father was in Tehran, they called to my mom. Uh, and ask for him and they told him yeah tell him to come to us this day and my father immediately left Tehran and he came to Mashhad he went house and left her suit his suitcases and I was the only one with my mom uh, in the house and he told me Roshin please make a tea I'll come back in two hours and then, so I was preparing tea for him in order for him to come and I can um, uh, help him and welcome him. But he didn't come back that day. After two weeks, we heard that chilling news that he was executed for his uh, fate in Mashhad prison. One of the final punishments, if I can say that, for your dad and for your family was they didn't give the body to yeah. you guys to have a burial and have a funeral. Yeah. They just told you, oh, yeah, we buried him. He's in the cemetery. But but no, you can't have a gravestone. You can't have a grave marker. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and why that punishment was part of the, part of the deal. Yeah, my father buried by strangers, yeah, by the government in a part of Mashhad Cemetery reserved for those the government called the cursed. The cursed. the cursed, so so apostates, basically. Yes, yeah, not even uh, Christian, other uh, minority group who were not Muslim or who were, act uh, were active against government. So they're reserved for those people. It was and it still is a dusty, unmarked grave. And we were not allowed to put up a headstone or a cross or even a small sign by his name. And it is a dusty a place and it's like a desert. <laughs> so here's this man who gave his life for Christ and lies in an unmarked grave. Your family could never really mourn or yeah. or have a place to go to say this is where our dad is buried. Does that add to your grief or does it add to your pride of look at he even sacrificed yeah. having a, a grave? We were alive, and now we are allowed to go to his graveyard, and but we are not allowed to change anything. But it was actually, and I was thinking, because my father, he was not involved in any 
terrorist attack or anything against government. Instead, he was helping people and he was... Uh, so why such a man uh, should bury in that place? And it was hard actually. But as you mentioned, it adds to our pride because I just I remember that Jesus Christ didn't deserve crucified on the cross, mm-hmm. but God turned it to them. But this cross nice saving lives. And so on that time, it was re- very difficult for us and. Um, until um, 2016, um, I had a dream about my father's graveyard. If you, if you want, I can share it with you. Yes, yeah. please. Because I always was thinking, so why we are not allowed to put any headstone? Because it's part of our culture is important as well. Mm-hmm. It's it's part of honor. Yeah, it's bring honor. And then. Um, it was uh, near his um, 26th anniversary and I had a dream. I was praying actually here and it was as if God took me to my father's grave. And when I saw his dusty grave, I became very deeply upset and sad. And suddenly God, uh, I heard God's voice uh, telling me, Roshin, stop, don't worry. I want to show you what is happening deep under the grave. And what he showed me shook my heart and my soul. And I clearly remember, it was as clear as I am standing here. And I I found myself in my father's graveyard. And God told me that when that body and blood became dust, it was as if a great tree with a thick trunk had been planted and formed under the ground. And the roots of the tree resemble arteries, and blood is flowing out through them to satisfy all who are thirsty. And that was true, because at the moment we are hearing in Mashhad, hundred and hundred people coming to Christ. So the legacy of your father is still producing fruit in, in that city and in the church there. Amen. Amen. Exactly. And, and then I saw that the tree with uh, its very thick trunk and its branches reached out and covered the whole city. And I heard God said, I will quench the thirst of those who are thirsty in this city and in this country. The blood of Jesus Christ has shed so we can be saved. And since then, much more blood has also been shed so that the good news of salvation can reach us. And one of the interesting things, as I understand it, Mashad means place of martyrdom. Is that correct? It's like the city is named after the martyrs? Yes, yeah, one of the mom's grave is there, okay. yeah. So. <laughs> so they would be talking about Muslim martyrs, but obviously the place where your father is buried as well. Yeah. Rasheen, one of the things that is fascinating to me is there was kind of a wave of martyrdoms among people that your dad knew and, and was close to. The pastor who married your parents was killed. Pastor Hike, who ordained your father, was later killed. Others, you knew all of these men who ultimately would lay down their lives for Christ. When you think back on them, and, and I think we tend to say, oh, you know, a martyr is some kind of a super Christian that is so spiritual and so beyond all of us, but you actually knew them as people and, you know, laughed and cried and, and so... What do you, when you think back on some of those men, what do you remember about them? Yeah, um, you mentioned a good point when we are thinking about these people, they are saints, but they were among us, they were living among us, and they were part of us. And it was um, what separated us maybe from the way they, they choose to live. I think 
they were they were the same as us they were human but they choose christ and they choose to have different lifestyle and also but even because um, i remember they would come to our house so uh, they had they lived the normal life we were laughing together uh, we were going out and had fun together and they um they had time with their families as other people had so they kind of have this they were not supernatural people separated from the world they were part of us but they had they uh, had choose to uh, have different lifestyle and live the follow Jesus uh, and uh, so yeah I remember brother Hike he would come to our house and even he would talk to us as a ch uh, children and I had conversation with him as well I remember brother Ravan Baksh who was hanged in the jungle in um, he was murdered in north of Iran and also even I remember brother Diwaj uh, because he was in prison most of the time but uh, when he was released for the last time he came to our house so he was the one encouraged me to go to Bible college so they were kind of involved in our daily life as well and you in many ways are are living out that legacy you're still involved with the Iranian church. You're still involved in helping build the church there. Tell me a little bit about your ministry today and how how you're kind of reaping the fruit of some of those seeds that were planted in your life way back then. When I heard about my father's martyrdom in the first, I think after three days, because I was very close to my father and I always thinking and telling to myself if one day I lost my father I can't live anymore but in the first day when I heard that news I clearly remember that a caring hand was actually <laughs> um, surrounding me and uh, after three days I wrote a letter to God and promised him to um, follow my father's footsteps and serve him as my father did. On that time, I didn't know <laughs> what <laughs> would my ministry like or um, how can I serve God. But as I mentioned about the divorce, I was about to finish my school and then I, I love to study psychology. I was preparing myself to go to university and study psychology. And one day, um, Brother Dibach came to our house and asked me, so uh, what do you want to do for your future? What is your plan? And um, I shared with him so what is in my heart and I'm preparing myself to go to university. And he looked at my eyes and he said, have you heard about Bible school in England? I said, I think you need to go that God wants to use you. And that was challenging <laughs> for me because uh, on that I knew my mom is keen to have us all together because after that happened to my father, she didn't want us to be separated from her. So it was hard. And I prayed and I, I prayed to God so... If it's your will, I pray and fast for one week. And if it's your will, you put in my mom's heart. And after one week, I went to my mom and told her. I had this fear in my heart so about her reaction. But she said, oh, that's really good idea. So <laughs> let me talk to the pastor and the brother Edward. So then after one year, two years, I think I went, I left Iran. I studied in Bible College with Elam Ministries and then where I met my husband, uh, Amir, and we got married. And after that, I started my, gradually I started my ministry. So my, menis, my ministry mainly is among Iranian women because there is 
great need among these lovely people because they are coming to Christ. But because they are coming from different background, religious background, they are bringing all these issues with them to their Christian life. So God put in my heart to work among these people. So I was producing TV programs for Iranian women, TV teaching programs according to their issues and problems they are facing in Iran. And also I was involved meeting them in the conferences and and also I was involved in teaching and uh, preaching as well. So doing all this kind of ministry helped me to see the uh, other need of Christian uh, women and even men. Uh, so because I realized that they are coming to Christ and they are uh, they are growing in their Christian faith for a few months or years. But after that, something preventing them to grow in their Christian faith and then realize that this is because all the issues they are bringing, because they were facing domestic violence, sexual abuse, and then they feel rejection. So all these issues need to sort out in their life. And then... I felt God is calling me to study Christian counseling, which I was keen to study psychology, but not that was the right time for me uh, to decide to study Christian counseling. So since then, the direction of my ministry have been changed. And although I'm involved in uh, TV ministry and also conferences, uh, but my focus is m- more uh, on counseling and helping pe- people with their specific issues. As we finish up, Rasheen, one of the things that we always try to do on Voice of the Martyrs Radio is help people to pray. I'm going to ask you two specific prayer questions. First, for the families of martyrs. You're almost 30 years now that you've been walking on this road, but there's some people that are in the first few months of walking this road. How can we pray for the families, and I think especially of the children, of Christians who have been martyred for their faith even recently? How, how do we pray for their families? Um, yeah, please pray for uh, God send them right, send right people to them. They can help them financially, emotionally, and yeah, because maybe the situation is different. Some people have more financial problems. Some people have they need more support emotionally. So pray that God brings uh, right people to them. They can pray with them and support them and help them and encourage them and uh, comfort them. And then my second question is, how do we pray for Iran, for, for the church in Iran, but also for the, the country as a whole? Um, so pray that uh, the good news of the gospel will spread over the land, um, that every person will have an opportunity to hear and understand the work of Jesus on the cross. And also uh, pray that discriminations against Iranian women will be overcome. And pray also for those suffering through domestic violence and the drug addiction of fathers and husbands which have led to undramatically increased depression, running away from home, prostitute and suicide amongst women. And how can we pray for the church in Iran? Pray that God would bless whatever everybody, all the ministers doing for his kingdom and use this for his glory and for strength and for wisdom. Yeah, and Holy Spirit, courage their hearts. Rasheen, it's such an honor to get to sit down and talk with you. And thank you so much for sharing memories of your dad and memories of Pastor Hike and others. Uh, and just how how God has been faithful to you, even through loss and even through that pain. Thank you so much for being our guest this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you so much. It was my privilege and honor to be here and share my story. And thank you for listening to what I said. 
You've been listening to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. If you're just now joining us, you can go online to vomradio.net and you can hear this whole conversation. I would encourage you this week to pray for Rasheen and for her ministry and also to pray for the country of Iran. We, we know God is doing amazing things there and it's very exciting, but there are needs as well. And so I want to encourage you to pray for Iran this week and come back and join us next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.